How are you? Monica Bodierski here, artist and author of the Shadowland Tarot and the House of Shadows Lenormont, and also the founder and programmer of the Witchfest North Arts and Culture Festival, now in its fifth year. Thank you so much for all of you who are supporting us by coming out and sharing your wisdom, your company, just sharing yourselves and being generous with your time, and also for purchasing tickets to the festival. Just a reminder, One Tree Planted, my business, personally, monicabodierski.com, as well as witchfestnorth.org. We are both proud reforestation partners of One Tree Planted, a wonderful organization that has planted 11 million trees since 2014. Every ticket and pass you buy for the Witchfest North Festival, you are planting one tree. Thank you so much. We had an incredible opening and there's still lots of time to buy tickets so please uh, visit witchfestnorth.org to find all the eventbrite links and get yourself a ticket join us we have cookies okay what are we talking about today everyone well it is season of the witch and October just brings out the witchiest of witch in me uh, like I need prompting so I thought I would talk about witches. Clean, 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 clean. What are we cleaning? We're cleaning everything. So I'm going to give you five tips on how to clean in a witching way so that you are pretty much spell casting and integrating your practice with your everyday chores, mundane as they may seem. So, Let's get started. Let's start with number one. Let me look at my list, or I'll forget. Which is laundry. Oh my goodness, what an opportunity laundry is. You can put a little bit of your favorite essential oil, just a little, or an essential oil blend, just a little, that you have magically enhanced. You can have a blend for protection, to be sultry, to be successful, whatever it is you need. Yep, you can do that. Do it in your wash. Also, you're removing all of the stale energy, not just the dirt. Remember that we're talking about energy here, which is in the dryer. Again, a drop or two of your favorite essential oil blend can give you that uh, cleansing, purification, protection, whatever you need absolutely imbued in your clothing, your sheets, whatever. Okay, that was number one. Number two. What is number two? Ah, yes, one of my favorite things to do, of course, and many of you, I'm sure, here's a reminder for those of you already doing it, though, don't forget when you are washing a floor or a countertop or a, a surface, you're washing it, okay, washable surfaces, washing in the bathroom, you know you're getting rid of all sorts of stale energy. And what do I mean by stale energy? Well, of course, you know, when we are down, when we are depressed, when we are stressed and anxious, yes, I think you are leaving your little scatterings of all of that energy that can create a real heaviness to your life you don't need right now. There's enough going on, right? So, Rather than just using the average toxic cleaner, I'm just joking, I'm sure many of you are using eco-friendly and green cleaners. But why just use something like, say, white vinegar, baking soda, and water, when you could use blessed water, little moon water, maybe some salt for purification, and again, some of your essential oils, heck, even throw some of your magical herbal blends in there. But let me just say this. Make sure you understand your correspondences before you go throwing things around willy-nilly because you could be the sorcerer's apprentice and creating all sorts of messes worse than what you had. So, just a little caveat there. little be careful. So what else? Number three. Number three. When you are sweeping 
and vacuuming, why not do a little spell to rid yourself of all the things you'd like to rid yourself of while you're getting rid of all the dirt? You know, even vacuuming. You know, I throw a little essential oil on this little area rug that we have. <gasps> not only does it smell great, but it is cleansing everything that gets fil filtered through the vacuum cleaner. And, of course, sweeping. Magic broom. What can I tell you? Magic broom? Where are you, magic broom? I moved my magic broom. I was sweeping today. You can sprinkle your magic broom, and or if you call it a bassam, with a sprinkling of your favorite blends again. And you can sweep everything out of your life you don't want in your life. Out. Now, I was going to say out the door, but let me tell you something. You don't necessarily want all that negativity planted outside your door. You might want to sweep it up in a smaller, you know, little sweepy thing, whatever you call them, and throw it in the garbage and take it away from your home. Some people say, oh, just outside the house is okay. That really depends what you got going on in your home. If it's something exceptionally negative, I would take it away from your home to a public garbage site. Don't worry about other folks. You know, sometimes negative energy is like big bed bugs. I hate to say it, but it has a particular sense and attachment to you. So don't worry about others. Why the heck would they be poking in garbage for your sweepings? Just saying, okay? Not gold bars. And please don't be worried about homeless folks. They got enough on their mind. Negativity kind of already pay them a visit, if you know what I'm saying. Okay, number four. Number four. Oh, what do we got? Cleaning and wiping your sacred spaces. Oh, please don't forget those. I have visited some folks, no names, and please, I'm trying not to shame people, but some of these folks are wondering why they're having particular negative energy when they do their magical workings, and their altars are this thick in dirt and dust, and, you know, not the best thing. It's kind of what was referred to in my family as disrespectful. So you might want to just keep your altars clean. If you don't know what to do with used up sacred items, you know, find a place that you can put them if they're biodegradable, put them in, in their proper space, thank them for what they've done, release them, that energy is now done. How do you know when? Well, you can change things seasonally. Certainly you don't want things molding and rotting, and you don't want all that dust and dirt, okay? Remember to clean the water, too, if you have water on your altar as an offering for ancestors or other spirits. Okay, number five. We're coming down to the big number five here. This one is really important, too. When we're talking about cleansing, cleanse yourself. Yep, that's why I was holding up a bar of soap folks. You know, when you're doing ritual work or when you've had a bad day, uh, a shower is not just good for the obvious hygiene reasons. Sometimes it's a great way to cleanse the aura, have particular types of soap that you really enjoy. Some folks use black soap. I highly recommend it. Some people use lavender soap. Some are allergic to lavender soap. It really depends what you know about essential oils and herbs and what you feel that, you know, will cleanse you, not just skin deep, but right to the soul and your aura. Let it all go down the drain. Say all sorts of chants and things while you're in the shower. Who's going to notice? You know, pain, pain, go away. Don't ever come back. I don't know. It doesn't have to rhyme, but sometimes rhymes and repetition as we know, in all ritual and chants, really does put us in an altered state in which we can do our magical workings and be more effective in directing our energy to cleanse ourselves. So there you have it, five ways. You counted them right here. Five ways to get clean, witches. So do that. Have yourselves a sparkly, clean October and always. Don't forget to come out and check out witchfestnorth.org and, of course, me on my website. Thank you all for watching. Have yourselves a great week. Bye-bye.